Welcome to Dead Matter News, where I'll be covering the latest news on Dead Matter. Now yesterday, a developer diary has came out and provided us with a ton of content for us to look at. And not only that, they seem to leave some hidden secrets for the community to figure out, and I will be sure to go in depth and explain what is in this week's developer updates. Let's do this. First right up is the underground bunkers that Shirk has created and is still in development. I actually made a video about this topic, so if you want to go and learn more about it, then go click in the link in the description below. Shirk says this. Since the start of this year, I've been working on a secret underground location. The set of structures I am making are modular and can be used all across the map in various ways. They can be used for a variety of purposes like storage, securing, exploring, and even a way to get into another location in secrecy. I've always loved when games have large underground areas such as bunkers, subways, and sewers. I find it really adds depth to the world and is extremely rewarding when you are exploring and stumble upon something so large yet so hidden. There isn't much to say about the bunkers right now without spoiling anything, but I think everyone will really enjoy them and their uses. Currently I blocked out the majority of the tunnels, rooms, and hallways to make sure everything snaps together and works well. Next step is to finalize their modularity and then get working on producing the art for them. So the layout of bunkers in this game are going to be huge. The devs want the underground areas to also be explorable throughout the map. When Shirk says, stumble upon something so large yet so hidden can possibly mean anything. We don't know if he means by finding really rare loot or if he's using these terms literally, which means that we could find something large like a large army of AIs, possibly. Shirk also has something that has yet to be revealed. He currently doesn't want to say much about the bunker so we'll have to wait and see in the next dev diary. Up next we have Nomad creating a large transmission towers which will serve potential landmarks to be used while traversing the map. And if you can't imagine how big one of these towers are, then you can go ahead and compare that to an actual human model which shows right there. Nomad also created models for getting water out from the ground. This can now be one of many ways to obtain fresh water. One model is a windmill that can collect more groundwater depending on how fast the rotor is spinning. And if you want to go small, you can use a pumping well to extract water into a small container, but you'll need to purify it in order to drink it safely. This could be a good way to gain access to water if you lived in a city or populated area. Now Juicy Juni has improved something called world streaming. He states this. I've significantly changed how houses are loaded into the game. Houses are now stored as level instances that can easily be edited and are streamed into the game by actors we place down. This means LOD generation for HLOD will skip out bits of the furniture and small items that aren't visible, yet we can easily retain extremely important objects such as curtains or barricades. Juni also improved the quality and added new features on the player's inventory. He implemented an icon renderer where the items in the slot already renders without having to manually create the icons for each item, but I can't accept the fact that a bag of air contains more space than a Russian armored helmet. Juni also added a drop menu where you can click on the item and interact to either drop, place, or use the item. Juni explains ways of crafting items in the game. He says this. Crafting will involve dropping items on top of each other or using the crafting bench will I'll be posting on the next developer update. I'm not sure what he means to drop items in order to craft, hopefully he can demonstrate that later in the development. Next we got Dusty making more weapons than we ever seen in a single dev diary. The guns names were not mentioned in the update but by looking at these images we can narrow down the answer on our own. We have two types of AK-74, an AKM with a 75 round magazine, an extended clip, and a regular magazine. We got a Glock, and a lot of Remingtons. And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot, a lot. Thank you so much, Dusty. Now, Yada couldn't accomplish much because he was working a lot of things behind the scenes, but he did have the time to create some utility poles, which looks pretty neat. Now, to end things off, in the Kickstarter, one of the goals we have achieved is having planes and trains to use as transportation. And in this update, this is our first step towards that goal. A dev known as Chaos has been working on train tracks that will be placed around the world. Keep in mind that these tracks will be a lot more common in game than we have in real life. The devs chose to do this to ensure that trains are a fun and great way to traverse the world. Chaos also created a commercial building and a tunnel that was made for trains to drive through. But there was something that I have come across and it's pretty strange. Now what's creepy in one of the images shows a graffiti of a man in a purple striped hoodie. And above that image shows a message saying the Riddlers are coming. Who could they be and what do they do? 
well, nobody knows, but there is speculation that these people are out there trying to steal and kill other survivors. There's also some graffiti that can be found on top of the entrance as well. Now before we end things off, last week I posted a video of Shirk's channel on how the maps he created should be in Dead Matter. After I let you guys made your decisions, we managed to get 99% of the people to say yes, and you guys absolutely killed it. Shirk indeed replied to the situation by saying this, We won't use any of my older content for Dead Matter, I'll remake it if anything, but won't reuse it. Well, if that's the case Shirk, then DO IT! JUST DO IT! And we can all be honest that Shirk makes pretty damn creative maps, so whatever is coming up in Dead Matter will be sure to not disappoint. From what we can see about the dev update, we can figure out some things we can expect in the next one. We will be informed more about the underground bunkers for sure, and Juni will also give us details on how the crafting system works. What I hope to see in the next update is more of the lore like we had with the graffiti, and who knows, we might see the Riddlers make an appearance. So that'll be it for this video guys, what are your thoughts on the Riddlers? Send me your thoughts in the comment section below, leave a like and subscribe to get the latest news on Dead Matter.